Glad you're here again this week. We're going to be talking today about judgment. And we realize that that whenever we talk about judgment, it brings up all kinds of things in people's minds. I mean, people think about a grade they were given by a teacher on a test, or um, if they're a, a gymnast and they were doing a routine, the scores that they were given by the judges. And and uh, and so we think about um, being rated or being being graded, and and a lot of people think, well, is God going to do that for me? Is God going to do really? I mean, how would a loving God do that? I've heard a lot of people say, Jesus is so kind, so loving, so sweet. Why would he judge us? Mm. And I think we're going to, we're just going to go ahead and address that with a particular passage of scripture. Mm. So if you'll flip to Hebrews chapter 10 and let's take it back. 28 describes it pretty well, but I think we need to back it up to verse 26. So Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Hmm. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the spirit, uppercase S, of grace. Mm. Wow. So when you think about what sh- refusing to choose Jesus means, uh, particularly in this passage in Hebrews, it starts to make more sense as to why there would why Jesus would um, judge himself, mm-hmm. why he would why he would offer judgment. For we for we know him who said, "It is mine to avenge; I will repay." And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Mm. The fear of the Lord is not something that we like to talk about um, in the last probably to at least 20 to 30 years. At least, at least the last three decades, we don't like to talk about the fear of the Lord. But how can we have a pure, honest, holy concept of the afterlife if we don't talk about the fear of the Lord mm-hmm. and about judgment? Um, so in that, let's move on. Matthew 10, 28 and 29. Let's just... Uh, just kind of address that real quickly. Matthew 10, 28, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. However, this, this seems pretty heavy and it seems pretty dark. But if you go back to Hebrews chapter 10 and you focus in on verse 39, I think that you'll find where our assurance can rest as we go through this study. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but we are of those who believe and are saved. So it's in that vein that let's get going um, this week into talking about judgment. Not out of fear and trepidation, but out of assurance of where this will lie. Yeah, but still that question exists. Why must there be a judgment? I mean, can't God just let live and let live and just like other people want to do? I mean, um, the answer is very simple. God is holy. And God's holiness reveals our sinfulness. God's holiness and our sinfulness cannot reside together. Um, we in our sinful state will never be able to enter into the presence of God. And so this judgment is necessary. And, and in fact, as you look through the Bible, there are a lot of different moments when God has judged his people. Uh, you can read about that in the study this week. But we're going to talk about three judgments that we see in Scripture that, that we will all face. The first judgment is a judgment that takes place at death. Um, it, it's a judgment that's based on the decision that we've made in the course of our lives as to whether Jesus is Lord and Savior or not. And so when we die, there will be a judgment that will be immediately given to us upon our death. And that judgment uh, will determine whether we go to heaven or hell. If we have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior during the course of our lives, we will be judged and sent to heaven. If, if we have rejected Jesus as Lord and Savior, then we will be judged and sent to hell. That's the first judgment that, that we uh, will talk about this week. The second judgment is a judgment that, that we see on two different occasions in Scripture. One is the great white throne judgment that you see in Revelation 20, verses 11 through 15. The, the other um, element of this judgment is, is seen in Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46, where um, Jesus returns and sits on his throne and judges the nations. We're maintaining in this that those are talking about the same thing. 
where Jesus comes, sits on his throne, and all of the nations are brought before him, both the living and the dead. And he separates them as a shepherd separates the sheep Mm -hmm. from the goats. And he sends one group to hell and the other group into heaven. And, and, and so that's that judgment that takes place um, and that, that second judgment when Jesus returns. The third judgment that we're talking about is um, the, 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 the judgment seat of Christ. And that is where uh, in heaven, uh, those who have been blessed to live eternally with God in heaven will come before Jesus at the great judgment seat and he will grant them cr- crowns. Those crowns are not based on, on their confession, but they're grace, based on their convictions and the way in which they live their lives um, as people of faith. And you will receive those crowns. And I, I think that's just going to be such a beautiful, beautiful moment in heaven. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Um, we are motivated to serve Jesus and to um, not to earn crowns. We don't even think about that. We're just longing to be Christ-like in the way that we live our lives. So that's our motivation. However, I think it's so awesome to imagine that we'll receive crowns, not to strut around wearing in heaven, thinking how great we look, but so that we can quickly take those crowns and we'll have something to offer um, at Jesus' feet. I just think how wonderful that would be to have something. Since we don't get to take anything with us, but our soul and um, the souls of those other believers. So I think it would be so great to be able to have something to cast Mm. at Jesus' feet. Mm -hmm. Um, One other thing I wanted to go ahead and mention, because it's been asked already, are we not going to get into eschatology, into the timing, Mm. the order of all of these events, of the judgments and of the rapture, uh, where all of that falls? And I'll be honest with you, we did start writing about that and making several charts um, on that that issue of post-tribulation, pre-tribulation, and I got a little carried away with all of that. only to realize that's really not foundational to this study. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do encourage you if that's something that entices you like it does me and you'll want to dig in deeper, go for it. Um, But we did choose to eliminate Mm -hmm. that from the study just to keep it into an eight week. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention that because we have been asked about the timing. Yeah, There's been another question that's come up as we've been going through this study with people and that is the question, um, what about those people that have never heard about Jesus? You know, the traditional question, what about that person who lived on a deserted island and and never had an opportunity to have the gospel proclaimed to them? What about that person? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. God, in His omnipotence, of course, He answered that. In Romans chapter 1, He, he uh, explained that so very well. Um, starting, ver- let's start with verse 20. You can back it up to 18 in your own personal study, but we'll just go for, for time's sake on verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, and His divine nature have been clearly seen, mm. being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Um, you'll see in this study that we have other passages that explain that as well, mm. but I think that's that's probably the most obvious. Mm-hmm. Right there. Yeah. So the last thing we want to talk about is really, I think, um, uh, an important word for us, and that is it's important for us to be ready. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. Can a person make a declaration of faith in Jesus on the deathbed? Mm -hmm. Well, well, certainly they can. But why wait? Mm -hmm. Why wait? Mm-hmm. There's a story in Matthew 25 that we talk about in, in the, at the conclusion of this of this chapter's work, and and it's about the bridesmaids that went to the to the to prepare the way for the the bridegroom to come, and they some had enough oil with them for their lamps, and some didn't. And the bridegroom came at an unexpected hour. We don't know when he's going to return, mm-hmm. just like they didn't know when he was going to come, and he's going to come at an unexpected hour, and. Some of us may not have oil in our lamps. Mm -hmm. We pray you will. And in addition to the second coming, we also don't know when our time on this earth personally is Mm -hmm. over, even before before the second coming and the return of Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, Therefore, why wait? That's the urgency um, is that we don't know. That's right. So we do have a lot to talk about today. And uh, uh, our prayers are with you in your group and with the discussions that you're going to have. And uh, we just pray that you'll hear the Lord speak to all of you today during your time together. Mm-hmm. Let's pray now. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. 
Lord Jesus, we uh, there's a lot we don't understand, God. There's more that we don't understand than that we do understand. So, Lord, I just ask that your precious Holy Spirit would be in every room and every discussion and that you would be welcomed joyfully by all those in the group. That, Lord, we long for your guidance and your understanding. And, God, give us the assurance and the hope that when we don't understand, you're still right. And we just haven't learned enough yet. Mm -hmm. Um, So, Lord, in that vein, I ask that you would guide our studies and our discussion this week by the power of your precious blood shed for us and by the power of your name. Amen. Amen.